we're going to talk about logarithmic functions. So earthquakes are measured on the Richter scale. A higher measure on the Richter scale means there will be more damage because for each increase in one unit on the scale, there's tenfold increase in the intensity of an earthquake. Logarithmic functions help us understand diverse phenomena, including earthquake intensity, human memory, and the pace of life in large cities. So for a logarithmic function for x greater than zero and b greater than zero, where b can't be equal to one, y is equal to the log base b of x. It's the same thing as or equivalent to b to the y equals x. This would be in exponential form. This will be in log form. The function of f of x equals log base b of x is a logarithmic function with base b. The equations of y equals log base b of x and by to the equals x are different ways of expressing the same thing. The first is in the logarithmic form and the second is the exponential form. The location of base and exponent in exponential and logarithmic functions, we have the logarithmic form log base b of x equal to y. And this is the way I prefer to put it rather than y equals because I think it's easier to see how they relate. For exponential, we have b to the y equals x. So notice that the b's stay in the same place. They are, they come first. The x and the y appear to swap. That's not what happens mathematically, but visually it looks like the x and y will switch places. y is the exponent and b is the base. So b to the exponent equals x, b to the the, the base to the x equals the exponent. So the basic log logarithmic properties involving one. Log base b, b is equal to one because one is the exponent to which b must be raised to obtain b. So if I change it to exponential form, I get b to the one equals b. And that makes sense because anything to the first power is itself log base b of 1 equals 0 because 0 is the exponent to which b must be raised to obtain 1. So b to the 0 equals 1 because anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So we have characteristics of logarithmic functions in the form or of the form f of x equals log base b of x. The domain consists of all positive real numbers so from 0 to infinity the range consists of all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. The graphs pass to the point of one zero because f at one is log base b of one equals zero. The x-intercept is one and there's no y-intercept. If base or if the b is greater than one, the graph goes to the right is in an increasing function or goes up to the right. If it's between zero and one, it goes down to the right and is a decreasing function. The graph approaches but does not touch the y-axis. Um, or x equal to zero is a vertical asymptote. All right, so this seems like a little backwards from what we learned about um, exponential functions in our last section. So let's look at what we're, we are looking at here. So. Here is our exponential function we learned in 2.5. The, um, let me see what it was called if you're looking for the video. It's exponential functions. And then here is the logarithmic function. <clears throat> and they mirror each other over the line of y equals x. This is with we, if we have a base greater than one if we have a base between 0 and 1, here is our exponential function. Here is the logarithmic function. The graph of the log function is a reflection of the exponential function about the line y equal to x. That means where whatever y equals, x equals. We have some common properties of logs. These are the general properties. These are the common logs. These are inverse properties. Same thing happens for natural logs. We have general properties, natural logs, and inverse properties. 
So we've talked about a few of these. Log base b of 1 is equal to 0. Log base b of b equals to 1. Log base b, b of x, equals x. b to the log base b, x, equals x. Log, if we're talking common logs, they're looking at the base of 10. So that's why these have 10 on them, because the common log base is base 10. So log base 10 of 1 equals 0. Log base 10 of 10 equals 1. Log base 10 of 10x equals x. And 10 to the log base 10x equals x. Now why don't we write the 10 for the base? It's because it's understood as the common log, kind of like the square root. If we take the square root of something, we don't put the 2 in there for the square root part. We understand if it's sitting there by itself, it is a 2 in the index. For natural logs, we have the same type of properties, except, um, so these are the same. Here we're going to have ln. The base for ln is e, so ln of e of 1 equals 0, ln base e, e equals 1, and ln base e, e to the x equals x, and e to the ln base e of x equals x. So, ln and e do not cancel each other, they actually undo each other. So don't say cancel, they actually undo. And recall that b to the m times b to the n equals b to the m plus n. And we're going to get into um, the rules here in a minute. Let's go look at a few log equations. I know that's a lot of rules, but it's so that you have it all there and then we will come back and use it as needed. So for example one, we will write the equation in equivalent exponential form. So we're going to be given a log form and we need to write it as exponential. So if we have log base 2, 32 equal to 5, if I want to write that in exponential form, the 2 will stay in the same place and the 32 and the 5 will move. It looks visually like they swap places, but mathematically it's something else. But visually it will just look like they swap. All right, let's look at B. If we have log base 7 of 1 equal to 0, 7 comes first, and then it will be 7 to the 0 equals 1. Now, when you have all numbers, you can see, does this make sense? If I put this in the calculator, 2 to the 5th equals 32. 7 to the 0, well, anything to the 0 equals 1. So, so far, I've made true statements. All right, and let's look at C. If we have log base 4 of 32 equals 5 over 2. So base 4 of 5 over 2 equals 32. And if, again, we put that into the calculator, we will find that that is true. All right, let's look at example 2. We're going to write the equation in equivalent logarithmic form. All right, so for part A, we have 343 equals 7 to the third. So if I want to write this in um, equivalent log form, first off, I'm going to switch the sides and write it as 7 to the third equals 343. It's the same equation, but it's in the format that I like to have it in to be able to write my log easier. So now we're going to have a log. My base will be 7. The 3 and 343 are going to move. So 343 equals 3. So log base 7, 343 equals 3. All right, let's go do B. 
we have 9 to the 3 halves equals 27. So that will be log base 9. Also notice that the bases, they are not on the same level. They're actually dropped a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to see, but they are lower. The 32 on the previous problem is on the level with log. The 2 is lower. 1 is on the level with log. The 7 is lower. 343 is on the level with log. 7 is lower. And then this will be 27 equals 3 halves. So don't write it on the same level because that's not what is actually happening. All right. Our next problem, example three, we are going to evaluate without using a calculator. Now, we can use a calculator, but we're going to use our log rule so be, we become um, better equipped. So here's our A. We have log base 10 of 1 million. So what I want to do is I want to understand, um, I want to find what the value is. So I'm looking to find... Um, my value of y. We've got log base b of x equals to, to y, if we recall. Log base b x equals y. So I'm looking for that y value. All right, so what I'm going to do is change this to exponential form, and I'm going to say 10 to what power of y equals 1 million. Well, 10 to the sixth power equals 1 million, whoop, got to put enough zeros. So my y is equal to 6. So I can use the properties to understand a little bit better of what is happening. All right, let's look at b. I have log base e of 1 over e to the 9 equals y, and I want to solve for that y again. It's the same thing that's happening over here, except instead we have the e. So we're looking at log base e, e to the y equals to y. That would be the rule. So let's change this to um, a little bit of what's going on here. So we have 1 over e to the 9. Let's rewrite our 1 over e to the 9 is actually equal to e to the negative 9 uh, exponent. So it's 1 over e to the 9. If we move that up to the top of the fraction, as we cross the line of the fraction, the 9 becomes a negative. So when we cross the line, the exponent changes its sign. So e to the negative 9. So now let's rewrite our problem as log base e, e to the negative 9 is equal to our y. Now what we can do, we can see we're in that format now. I can change this to uh, exponential and we'll have e to the y equals e to the negative 9. Well, in order for those to be true, we know that our y has to be equal to negative 9 because we have e to this power equals e to that power. That's that power of the same base we've talked about before. All right, let's look at c. Let's use a different color so that we're kind of following our little theme here. We have log base 2 of x equal to 4. So this one doesn't have any weird things going on. We're just going to change it to exponential. So we have 2 to the 4 equals x. 2 to the 4th power, that'll get us 16. And that's our answer. All right, let's go do a few more. All right, let's go do D. On D, we have log base 2 of 8 equals to Y. 
So changing it to exponential, we get 2 to the y equals 8. So 2 to what power will get us 8? So 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the second would be 4. 2 to the third power will get us 8. So 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 to the third equals 8. So our y equals 3. All right, let's look at E. We have log base b 6 to the negative 2 equals negative 2. That 6 is to the negative 2, so we're still going to change it to exponential. We'll have b to the negative 2 equals 6 to the negative 2. So what does our b equal? Our b is equal to 6. This time we didn't solve for the um, exponent, we actually solved for the base. All right, and then let's look at f. f, we have log base 121 of x equals 1 half. So if I change this to exponential form, I have 121 raised to the 1 half is equal to x. So recall that the 1 half power of the exponent is the same thing as the square root. So we're going to take the square root of 121 equals x. Square root of 121 is 11. So x is equal to 11. All right. So next, we're going to do some writing into simpler forms. Move this page. So we're going to write in terms of simpler form. So if we are given log base r of d to the 9, how do we write that in a simpler form? Well, let's go look at our rules. So we've already talked about the properties of logs. Now let's talk about some of the rules. So the product rule, let b, m, and n be positive real numbers with, where b can't be equal to 1. Log base b of m n, m times n, is the same thing as log base b m plus log base b n. So that's where we're going to recall that b to the m times b to the n, we would add the exponents. All right, for the quotient rule, we have log base b of m divided by n the division will become subtraction. So this is how I keep track of which one's which. So when we have multiplication, it's going to become addition. So rotate the x to become a plus sign. When you have division, division is like, um, you know, two dots in a line. It just becomes subtraction. So division is subtraction. You can kind of see the subtraction sign sitting there, even though it's a division sign. So those are some clues of on those to recall which way is which. So b to the m minus n is how that works when you're looking at exponents. When you're looking at logs, it'll become subtraction versus the one up there is addition. For the power rule, log base b m to the p, so if we have a raised to a power, it equals p log base b of m. So the exponent will go out front, and they call that a little bit simpler format. So there's a little bit of kind of like put together for expanding logarithms or for condensing them. So expanding means you make them longer and more spread out. Condensing, you put them back. So they kind of go the opposite way. So this is an idea of like the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. When you go to condense, you're going to have the longer side become the smaller and so it's basically kind of the opposite way of, of how you do. Whenever you're condensing them back together, that P has to go up first. The power has to go back. 
because the coefficient must be 1 before you condense it. All right, so when we're looking at this, this is going to become using our power rule. We have d to the 9, so the 9 is going to go out front. So we're going to end up with 9 log base r of d. That's what they're looking for in that simpler form. All right, let's go look at example 5. Here we're going to solve for x. All right, so let's kind of look here at the last little bit of um, some of the rules we have or some of the helps. So if we're going to use logs to solve exponential equations, you're going to isolate the exponential expression, take the common log on both sides, take the natural log on both sides of the equation for bases other than 10, simplify using one of the following properties, solve for the variable. You can use the definition of a log to solve logarithmic equations. Express the equation in the form of log base b, m, equal to c. Use that definition to rewrite our uh, into exponential form and then solve for the variable. Make sure you check proposed solutions in the original equation because, again, you can have um, uh, extraneous answers, ones that don't work. Um, remember, you can't take the log of a negative number. All right, so let's solve this one. So we've got log base b of x equals 2 thirds log base b of 216 plus 1 half log base b of 49 minus log base b of 42. So here what we want to do is we want to um, condense this. This is really big, really long, so we want to condense it. So we're going to look at what we need to do first. The very first thing is we have to put all of our p's, or the powers, the exponents, back up. So this is going to be equal to log base b of 216 to the 2 thirds plus log base b of 49 to the 1 half minus log base b of 42. Now do notice they all have the base of b, so that means we can combine them together. Let's do some sim simplification. If I take 216 and I raise it to the 2 thirds power, I get 36. So basically, we are taking the cubed root of 216 and then squaring it. So this, we're going to simplify our numbers. We'll have log base b of 36. Remember, to the 1 half power, it's the same thing as the square root. So we're taking the square root of 49, which would be 7. So log base b7 minus log base b42. There's no exponent, so there's nothing to simplify there. Now, if you recall, addition becomes multiplication. So log base b of 36 times 7 minus log base b of 42. Now, minus becomes division. I always will do the multiplication first before I do the division, because otherwise it gets a little hairy on, like, if I do this part first, how do I combine it with that? So I'll do the plus signs first and then do um, the subtraction part. So I'm going to simplify this. This is the same thing as um, 252. So let's do that first. So that way you can follow what I'm doing, minus log base b of 42, because you can't ask, ask a question because we're not in a classroom at this moment. All right, so this becomes division, so it becomes log base b. We can combine them because, again, they have the same base. So this will be 252 divided by 42. 
All right, 252 divided by 42 will get us 6. So this will get us log base b of 6. So if we're looking, we're solving for x. That was what we were told. So our original equation was log base b x equals our log base b 6. So x is equal to 6. Okay? A little bit of steps. As you get more familiar with these, if you want to skip a few steps to get there, you can. You can do a couple of things all at once. It, it'll be up to you as you have that learning curve. All right, let's look at example six. Again, we're going to solve for x. So we have log base b of x equals 3 halves log base b of 25 minus 2 thirds log base b of 64. So again, first thing we got to do is move that power back over. So we'll have log base b of 25 to the 3 halves minus log base b of 64 to the 2 thirds. If I put 25 to the 3 halves in my calculator, I will get log base b of 125 minus 64 to the 2 thirds will get me log base b of 16. So I can simplify the numbers once again. So this will get me, when, because I have subtraction, it's going to become division, log base b of 125 over 16. And again, that's equal to our log base b of x. So our x is equal to 125 over 16. And that does not simplify. All right, let's look at example 7. On example 7, we are, again, going to solve for x. So if we have log base 10 of x plus 12 minus log of base 10 of x minus 12 equal to 1. So this one looks a little bit different. We have a different base, and we have two parts equal to a number. So we're not using just that general uh, look. Again, division or subtraction becomes division. They have the same base, so we can combine them. So log base 10 of x plus 12 divided by x minus 12 is equal to 1. And I'm going to put parentheses on that so it's not quite so much to figure out. All right. If we recall, if we have log base b to the b equals 1. So if they have, this is the same, it will be equal to 1. That's kind of one of the things we're looking at. We're also going to look at um, what we can do to have that same base. So let's look at if it equals 1, because we have 10, we could, um, we could go to our exponential format, but in your homework, you're looking at more of what they're trying to, to show you. So I'm going to do it the way that they're talking about it. I'm going to rewrite 1 as having the same base um, as what the b is right there. So we're going to have log base 10 of x plus 12 divided by x minus 12 equals log base 10, 10 equals 1. So we use this rule to write 1 as log of the base of 10, 10. And actually, I don't need this one here. Sorry about that. Let me pull out my white out. Um, I was showing you that that equals 1, but we don't need, we don't want a third uh, equal sign on here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that out because we don't need a third equal sign. But understand, that's the same thing as 1 is log 
the base and this part is all the same. All right, so now that we have our log base 10 equals log base 10, remember that we said that we have log base b of m equal to log base b of n, then the m has to equal the n. So log base 10, log base 10, that means this has to be equal to that. So now we can set those two parts equal to each other. So we can say that x plus 12 divided by x minus 12 equals to 10. Now I can't solve for x if it's in my denominator, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by x minus 12. That will cancel it out over here. So we'll have x plus 12 equals 10 times x minus 12. And then I'm going to distribute that. So we'll end up with x plus 12 equals 10x minus 120. I want to get all the x's on one side and the numbers on the other because we don't have a square. So I don't need um, everything on one side. So I'm going to move the 1x over so I keep my x's positive. I have 12 equal to 9x minus 120. So I'm going to add 120 to the other side and get 12 plus 120 will get me 132 equals 9x. I'm going to divide both sides by 9 and get x equal to 132 over 9. That will reduce down by 3's, so I will get 44 over 3. And that will be my answer for x. So a little bit to do there. We could have also gone uh, exponential 10 to the first power equals this. We would have ended up in the same spot right here. 10 to the first power equals that and we would have gone the same way. So you could have also solved it using exponential, but this way too, you can also see some of those log rules that we're looking at and trying to understand. All right, let's look at eight. For example eight, we're going to evaluate with a calculator. All right, so for part A, we're looking at log of 1574.8. So it doesn't show us a base, so what is our base? Our base is base 10. So I'm just gonna type in my log button, and then I'm gonna put 1574.8, and it'll get me 3.19722506. Um, looks like they were having us go to five decimal places. So one, two, three, four, five, that means we're on the last, or the second two. The five behind it, it's five or more, will cause that to round to three. So 3.19773. So pay attention in the homework, how many decimal places do they want? All right, let's look at B. We have log of 0.074. 3346. So the log of 0 0.074 3, 3, 4, So we get a negative answer and that is okay. We can't take the log of a negative but we can have a value uh, be negative. So negative 0 is our fifth number, but there's an 8 after it, so the 8 will cause the 0 to round to a 1. So negative 1.12881. All right, here we have the ln of 74.38. We're going to take the ln of 74.38. And we'll get 4.309. Hmm. Yep. 187. So 
So that's going to round. So just making sure. We've got 4.3091, and then that's 4. The 8 had a 7 after it, so it's going to go to 9. Now what I want to show you, again, is ln of 74.38 gets us that. If I take the log of 74.38, I don't get the same answer. So there's a difference between ln and log. Now when we get later on, it doesn't matter. If we're doing it to both sides, it doesn't matter. It stays the same. But make sure you're doing exactly what they're asking for. And remember that 7 caused our 8 to round up. All right. And then part D, we have the ln of 0. I don't know why I put a parenthesis, sorry about that. 0 0.019129. Do, you don't need the parenthesis, but it's a habit. All right, so ln of 0 point, because it puts it in here, 0 0.019129 gets us negative 3.9565. Our 4 will also round up to a 5 because the 9 that comes after it. So it'll be negative 3.95655. All right, let's go to example nine. Oh, and I didn't box my answer. Sorry about that. So example nine, we are just asked to solve. So if we are given 10 to the x equals 17, this is where we're going to use those properties that I talked about, using logs to solve exponential. And you can use the log or you can use an ln depending on what the um, base is. Here we have a base of 10. So we are going to use the base because of 10, we're going to use log. So we're going to take the log. on both sides so we took the log of both sides and I'm doing the red so you understand what I changed now with that because I have the log of this equal to the log of that this follows the same thing we've talked about as uh, basically the power of the same base if the log of this equals the log of that then 10x has to be equal to um, Let's back up for one second. Let's, let's write a couple of log rules that we have here. All right, so on this one, we're using log base b of m equals log base b of n. Now, because on this one here, we've done this, right? We took the log of both sides. So we know our m and n have to look uh, equal to each other. But over here, we have something else going. Remember I told you we don't write the base if it is um, given, uh, it doesn't show. It's a base 10. So on this one here, we actually have log of 10, 10 to the x will be equal to the x. So because it has a log of base 10, and it's being log base 10 of 10 to the x, those will undo each other. And so really, we are just left with x here. So our x will be equal to the log of 17. Now we'll just use our calculator. Taking the log of 17, x will be equal to 1.2304. So we can use our log rules to make it a little bit simpler. All right. Let's look at number 10. So here again, we're going to solve. And we're going to do four decimal places. States it in the homework. So e to the x equals 6.493. So to do this one, we're going to take the ln of both sides. So the ln of e to the x 
equals the ln of 6.493. So this is basically the same rule that we were looking at up here, that if we have ln of base e, e to the x will be equal to x. So the ln with the base e and the e there, they're going to undo each other. So over here, we're going to be left with x equal to the ln of 6.493. Again, we'll put that in our calculator and get 1.8707 for our answer. Okay. All right, so question 11 is back on our handout. So how many years will it take $1,000 to grow to $10,000? if it is invested at 5.25% compounded continuously. So compounded continuously tells me I'm going to use the PERT formula. A equals PE to the RT. So I'm looking for how long. So how long tells me I'm solving for T is what I'm looking for. So that means I have, um, I'm going to be looking for A, in my problem, my P, and my R. Those are the variables that I can find inside the problem. How many years will it take $1,000 to grow to? 1,000 means that's the part I started with, that's my principal. Growing to $10,000, that's gonna be my accumulated value. My R is 5.25%, which I always have to change to a decimal, so it'll be 0 0.0525, don't forget that zero before the decimal place there, or after it, compounded continuously. All right, so let's set this one up. It's a little bit different because now we're solving for T instead of A. So my A is 10,000 equal to my P E to my rate of 0 0.0525 times t. So I'm going to simplify both sides by dividing by 1,000. And that will get me 10,000 divided by 1,000 is 10, e to the 0 0.0525t. Now that did simplify it, but there's another reason I have to do this. Because I'm solving for the t, and the T is in my power or with the E. In order to solve for T, I have to get it out of the exponent. And the only way to do that is to use the LN to get to use the power rule and move it out front. So I have to get the E by itself <clears throat> in order to use LN on both sides. So that's another reason why I'm going to divide both sides by 1,000. All right, so now I'm going to take the ln of both sides, so the ln of 10 equals ln of e to the 0.0525t. The ln, oops, forgot my equal sign. The ln and e, they undo each other. So we now have the ln of 10 equals 0.0525t because power rule brought it out front. The ln and e undo each other. Now to solve for my t, I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.0525. So my t now equals the ln of 10 divided by 0 0.0525. And when we put that into our calculator, and I'll put that in so you can see how to do that. So we have the ln of 10. Make sure you close that parenthesis on the 10 then hit divide by 0 0.0525. And you're gonna get 43.858. We're gonna to go to two decimal places so that eight will make the five a six. Okay? So it'll take 43.86 years for it to reach $1,000.